what's going on good people i wanted to just come in it's going to be a quicker video we got some updates uh in regards to tim norman and his appeal for his conviction uh, for his life sentence that uh we covered a few months ago and thanks to our friend chronicle speaks uh we got an update on that and then i got a little bit behind the scenes info that this came out this info came out on tuesday and please like the video and share it and subscribe because it is free to you but invaluable to me and the growth of this channel uh tim norman who we know those of you who don't know just a little background is known for his uh role on welcome back welcome to sweetie pies and he was denied his appeal for the two life sentences by a three panel appeals judge and as you may recall uh, Tim was convicted in September of 2022 for orchestrating the unaliving of his 20-year-old nephew, Andre Montgomery. And then Tim was found guilty for conspiracy to commit M for hire and conspiracy to commit mail fraud. And in the plot, Tim had orchestrated to unalive Andre for $450,000 life insurance policy, which he ended up never receiving. And that was after applying for five different life insurance policies. Only one was able to, only one went through. And then because of the fact that they found out that he was not cleared for the unaliving of Andre, he never got that money back. All he got back was his uh, premium uh, that he had been paying into it for a couple years. And uh, the court found that Tim had been planning this plot since 2014 uh, about two years prior to Andre's unaliving in 2016. Uh, Tim was then uh, convicted in September of 2022 for the M of Andre and was ordered to pay restitution, but they basically took his money. Well, they seized um, his property and seized the money, the money that he had paid in premiums, which I think was somewhere around $4,000, if I remember correctly. Even with all of that, being there, going through the trial, I was there, for those of you who don't know, myself, Chronicle Speaks, JSO Extra was also there. We were there for the nearly two-week trial. And even with all of the evidence and everything we saw, which clearly, clearly, clearly let us know that Tim Whitehip Normans was guilty, he was still pleading his innocence. Tim even took went so far... As to after he was sentenced, he took to his Instagram to post, thank you for all the prayers. I am still in disbelief. You, <laughs> we've been in disbelief. Says the feds know 100% I did not do those insurance policies. But the jury, <laughs> so Yael Yagnam, I guess, did them for himself <laughs> with your cousin's information. Why he didn't put it out on you? You were worth more. But anyway, he says, but the jury didn't get to hear that. And not one person got on the stand and said, I told them to hurt my nephew. No, because you were uh, using coded words with people. And everything that Travell Anthony Hill confessed to in his interrogations and what he signed, his, um, signed with his plea deal, he tried to go back on all of that during the trial. I was there. Don't lie to us. Don't be sitting there lying to my face. He says, they destroyed my name and image so you guys wouldn't search for the truth. They. That sounds like a narcissist. <laughs> it's they fault. So I guess the FBI took out Andre too. Okay, okay. But despite thousands of pieces against him, literally they said that they had about 40,000 pieces of evidence. 40,000 documents. And I believe it because I believe we saw at least probably 30,000 of them during the trial. Poll question I just put out. Did you know that Tim Norman appealed his conviction? 56% of you did know, 44%. And that's almost, that's very close, close, way closer to half than I thought it would be. But I have seen comments here or there under other videos related to Sweetie Pies where I was starting to see like some people don't even know he appealed. Yes, Tim Norman had appealed. We did a video on that as well. Uh, we even listened to the actual appeal hearing with the with his attorney and the prosecutor uh the, the government debating the case and um here what we're talking about today is the results so
So if you're not aware, I'll add the cards uh, to this and the links. I meant to actually pull them in. So Tim and Miss Robbie, because we know who paying for this. Uh, allegedly, I got to say that. Allegedly, uh, Miss Robbie is would be paying for this. Where's Tim getting the money from? He was broke. That's why he tried to have Andre taken out. That was proven in court. <laughs> I ain't got to say allegedly. This is documented. The same attorney who helped Bill Cosby to get his charges overturned, they ended up hiring her. She's not cheap. So Tim couldn't afford her. So Tim was unsuccessful with the court affirming his convictions for the conspiracy to commit in for hire and the conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud. So the court rejected his arguments and exclusion of certain testimonies and evidence, ultimately holding upholding the original trial's decision and ru uh, rulings. Because again, we got the other video on it, but I spoke a little bit about how Tim was trying to say that Judge Ross, who presided over the, the trial, was incompetent. Then he tried to say, well, Judge Ross should have rec recused himself because Judge Ross had someone in his family who was addicted to drugs. And because Travell Anthony Hill admitted to, that he was addicted to drugs, it's a conflict of interest for Judge Ross to have presided over a trial with one of the witnesses having a drug addiction like Judge one of Judge Ross's family members. This is like, what, girl? What? <laughs> he was trying. Oh, they were trying. <laughs> so the court documents show that Tim appeal was based on several arguments. Number one, he was claiming that the district court wrongly admitted certain text messages from Andre and statements from his accomplices. So he's upset that the text messages from Andre to Miss Robbie, where he was saying, Uncle Tim is after me. I'm afraid that Uncle Tim, you know, of what Uncle Tim is going to do to me, et cetera, et cetera. When she was trying to get him to come from, he was in Texas at the time. She's trying to get him to come back to St. Louis to take a lie detector test to prove that he wasn't the one who broke into her home. He ultimately ended up doing that. And that's ultimately what led to his demise. He came there to take the lie detector test, took it. The, the police cleared him. He stayed a little too long. Tim snuffed him out. Craziness, craziness. And then on top of that, you know, there were family members who was testifying to the fact that Andre was saying that if anything ever happened to me, Uncle Tim did it. So you had all of that. You had the text messages between him and white boy Chris, the, te the text messages between him and YL Yagnam, who was the uh, insurance agent who he claims he didn't know nothing about the life insurance policy, but we got the text message exchanges. And then to prove that he was broke, he actually, when Charles was reaching out to him, another set of text messages was Charles reaching out to him, asking for money for tickets or something. And Tim was saying, I don't have it. I got I, I got to get rid of my motorcycle. I got to do this. I'm about to get kicked out of my apartment, blah, 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 this and that. You making up that? Because all those things did happen. <laughs> all those things did happen. And one of the critical pieces of the evidence was the fact that Andre, in his communi tech communication with Ms. Robbie, had said that he was in fear for his life because Tim was after him. And um, that was admitted. You got a question, too, why Ms. Robbie didn't testify? Because Ms. Robbie was supposed to testify. I need y'all to put on y'all, uh, use your third eye and your third ear, your discernment. Why didn't Ms. Robbie testify? Because Ms. Robbie was supposed to testify. And I know this because I was there and she was on the list. And first couple of days go by, we thought she's going to be one of the first people. They never called on her. So she all of a sudden just started showing up in court. She wasn't all, all of a sudden she was no longer a witness. Why? Why? Wouldn't your mama be a good witness for you? My mama be a good witness for me? Wouldn't y'all mamas be, if they, if, you know, God, God willing, they still with us on this side of earth? Wouldn't your mama be a good witness for you too? If not, then the things that make you say, hmm, your own mama can't testify for you? Hmm. Say, anyway, he, uh, oh, Lord, y'all gonna give me blocked. <laughs> uh, he also argued that uh, the court failed to compel crucial witnesses to testify, but the judges, the appeal uh, uh, appellate judges were not convinced of that. So his other argument is that both white boy Chris, Chris Carroll, aka Chris Carroll, and, uh, well, Chris Carroll, 
he was allegedly like the lynchman. He was the go-between between Travell and Tim, giving Travell information to say, Tim wants you to take out Dre. And that was how that ball got rolling, basically. And, and Tim want to know how much you want to take out Dre kind of thing. When Chris Carroll got called, subpoenaed and called to the stand, Chris Carroll didn't go as any further than stating his name, the fact that he was married, one other little bit of information, and the rest of the information was, I plead fifth. They was like, do you know Tim Norman? I plead the fifth. Have, do you see Tim Norman in this courtroom? I plead the fifth. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. Do Have you ever worked at Sweetie Pies? Which he did. I plead the fifth. Do you know Miss Robbie? I plead the fifth. <laughs> so he pled the fifth, the under, and he had his attorney there. His attorney was standing next to him at the witness stand. <laughs> so Tim is saying, that's y'all fault. That's y'all fault that I use people who flip on me. <laughs> then you had Yael Yagnam, who Tim's attorneys, his team, failed at subpoena, uh, at sending a subpoena for YL to show up to court, they assumed that the government was going to uh, have him on their list. They didn't double check. They assumed, and you know what they say about assuming. So the trial start, they get two days in. I think we were about two days in when they realized that YL is not on the list of witnesses and they never subpoenaed him either, which means he's not obligated to show up to court. He don't even know to show up to court. So then um, Tim's attorney is trying to pressure the judge to force YL to come to court. Now he's like, we trying to subpoena him now. He, the judge is like, we have started the trial. You should have done that before. Then Tim's attorney is like, yeah, but they were supposed to do it. We, we thought they was going to do it. He said, that's not, that's not their fault. They didn't want to do it. That was on you to make sure it got done if that's someone you wanted to testify. So long story short. Uh, they, they hunted for him for about a week. Uh, they, they were sending people to his door. He wasn't answering. And then his attorney, they sent, uh, information, the subpoena to his attorney. His attorney said, YL is not showing up because he was never subpoenaed. However, if you force him to show up based on you contacting me, he's going to plead the fifth. So he going to do the same thing that Chris Carroll did. So long story short, Chris Carroll doesn't testify to anything meaningful. And YL don't show up at all. And so Tim, in, in his um, appeal, is saying that the court failed to make them testify. <laughs> That's not how it works. Sorry. That's not how it works. And then uh, part of with Chris Carroll, part of the argument they were making, and I noticed because we did the transcripts not too long ago, uh, part of the argument that they were making was that, well, Chris Carroll was testifying, well, was uh, in his interrogations, and he had like two or three of them with the detectives. He was talking then. He should he can't now plead the fifth if he will if he was willing to talk back then. So just because he talked back then during his interrogations, he y'all need to make him talk on this witness stand. And just like that's not how it worked. <laughs> that's not that's not how it worked. So Tim was, you know, upset, boohooing. He appealed, they shut it down. And yeah, so that's where we're at. We're looking basically um at Tim still spending the rest of his life, rightfully so, in jail. Uh, like I've said before, I feel like Tim Norman was both a blessing and a curse to the Sweetie Pies family in the sense of, because of him, they got known on a national level. If it had not been for him creating the Welcome to Sweetie Pies show, they would have been a, a you know soul food restaurant with a couple locations in St. Louis. But who knows, Andre would probably still be here the family's name would not have been, the legacy would not have been, um, you know, senselessly uh, tainted. And um, But Tim Norman is uh, still in jail. He is in the Hazleton. I did a video on this a long time ago, too. I'll try to link this. Uh, the Hazleton uh, Penitentiary in West Virginia. Uh, we don't really have much more, you know, on that. These are some old pictures. Probably had Tim looking now. Uh, Tim was looking really skinny during the trial, but I feel like during his sentencing, you already started to see him pick up weight. So I'm wondering, do, do y'all think he looked like Medea by now? Y'all think he can pick up more weight? This is from his first stint in uh, the penitentiary when he was a teenager. 
but yeah, that's about all I have on this. I um, thanks to Chronicle, I I didn't know that Yael was out. Yael Yagnam, the insurance agent, did. He is now. Oh, I'll put it this way. He is now. Um, that's the second one over him. Yael is. Um, he he got three years, but then he ended up getting early release this past April. So he is now free. Terica is free. The only ones that are still in prison is, what's his name? Travell. And Travell got like 32 years. He took a plea deal, which meant he was not supposed to be able to appeal. He still is appealing. So I don't, I haven't been updated um, looking, but he is in the process of appealing his sentence. And then you got Tim Whitehip Normans, Camel Hill, who is, yeah, going to be rightfully where he needs to be. So this is this was great news. The Griggs family was made aware of it earlier uh, before it hit before it hit us. But he ain't getting out. We already know this. He ain't getting out. But this was great news. This was great, 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 great news. And before I wrap up this video, for those of you who do not know, if you want to know more about this particular case and uh, a little bit more of a deep dive on it, not only do I have a timeline plot video where I literally went from site to site. But TV One, the series for my man, just did an episode on it where they did a deeper dive into the case. And I also appear in it. So make sure to check it out. I'll play a couple of clips before we get out of here. But if you want like, you know, the nitty gritty, an actual tour, like they didn't go to the actual, they didn't go to St. Louis. They just showing y'all B-roll. I went there. I showed y'all the places. So if you're interested in that, to see my uh, raw commentary, you can watch my original video. And if you want to see the, the produced, I say watch them both. They both good. So here's a little clip, just in case you haven't seen it, from my appearance on For My Man on TV One. For love or money, of all the seven deadly sins, lust and greed fit together like hand and glove. She was in the streets as far as like, you know, stripping and, and making money providing each other's needs on a very basic level. Valuing love and money equally can blur the line between which is which. She feels like she was manipulated into this situation. She would just collaborate with him for money. You know, I don't think she was unaware. And between what's right and what's wrong. March 14th, 2016, St. Louis, Missouri. It's just after dark on Natural Bridge Avenue in the city's north side neighborhood. Natural Bridge Avenue runs the length of North St. Louis. This area of St. Louis is known to have a very high crime and murder rate. Suddenly, gunshots shatter the quiet evening. St. Louis Metropolitan Police's 911 call center is swamped. One caller doesn't just give the location where the shots were fired, he gives the name of the victim. The 911 operator instantly recognizes the name, Andre Dre Montgomery Jr. At 21, Dre Montgomery is a national reality TV star. Dre is the grandson of Robbie Montgomery, star of Welcome to Sweetie Pies. Anyone who watched the show would instantly recognize Dre Montgomery's name. 911 dispatches officers and EMS to the scene. Will they arrive in time to save a youngest member of a show business dynasty? Yes, so definitely check us out. But that's my little update for this. As usual, justice for Dre. I'm uh, glad that we got more good news with this. Thank you to everyone who's viewing. If you're watching this and watching the replay, please hit that like button and subscribe if you have not shared this video as well. Sharing is caring and it is free to you, but invaluable to me and the growth of this channel. And uh, as April uh, Evans is saying, I didn't do it.
out for the people that ain't close to Speak a little something you can toast to I ain't tryna hear about what you won't do Moving like I mean to Hit the ground running like the rain do Speak a little something